A lot of people know cortisol to be the stress hormone, but a lot of people don't know is that cortisol often feels good, and this is probably why many people overtrain. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Remember we call those uh, cortisol junkies. Cortisol yeah. junkies. Yeah. You know what's funny? I, you know what I first heard the that energizer. was actually from a doctor that I trained. Oh, really? Yeah. I, was, I, I had a client that was a doctor, and we would talk about the you know how a lot of people just get addicted to exercise and I'd say, yeah, a lot of people, they just feel terrible, but they still go and train themselves super hard and they get that short window of feeling good afterwards. And he goes, oh, it's the cortisol. Mm. And I said, what? And he goes, yeah, cortisol. I mean, it's, it's a stress hormone because what it does is it gets your body to release energy right away. Mm. Now, too much cortisol over time causes muscle breakdown, can cause fat storage, obviously is a stress adaptation. But in the short term, it causes this energy release and he said, yeah, these people, you know, over time, their body probably becomes not unlike insulin insensitivity, right? When you start to lose sensitivity to insulin or develop insulin resistance, lots of cortisol over time probably starts to lose its effect. And so you're overtrained all the time, overworked. The same people, right? They don't sleep very good, a lot of coffee, mm -hmm. high stress. They tend to be late often to appointments. They also train their butts off and they love the workouts because they're like, but I just love the way it makes me feel even though they're obviously overdoing it. Well, this is why, too, like, you'll find it's usually higher in the morning, right? And that's mm. something that's more advantageous, get you up, get you going, that stress hormone kicks in, and then it's not advantageous for you. No. <laughs> like, especially when you get towards, uh, you know, sundown and starting to calm down. But, uh, yeah, it becomes, it comes one of those feelings you seek out uh, once you get into these high-intensity type of exercises. Did you guys find, like, a common theme? With the clients that, yep. like, what are what are some of the things? I, I felt the same thing too. I'm just curious if you guys are on the same. Oh, it's just the, the avatar is like this, right? They mm -hmm. they overtrain. That's obvious. We're talking about that. Super demanding job. Yes, high high performing, high stress job. Or like five kids. Yeah, lot, yeah, yeah, yeah five, five kids. kids. Yeah, that's which like is a demanding job. I mean, <laughs> that's why I said. Honest, yeah. I mean, that, that's a job you don't get time off, uh, right? So you got that. Um, they don't sleep very well. Lots of caffeine typically, and oftentimes to help them at night. Wine, or yeah, exactly alcohol something to bring, to bring them, down. them down, which yeah would yeah. typically be. Alcohol. And they navigate; they they tend to gravitate, I should say, towards uh, Orange Theory or CrossFit or HIT training or circuit training. Mm -hmm. They have 15 pounds of body fat that's stubborn; they can't figure out why it won't come off. They cut their calories. Why isn't this working? Oh, I know. I just need to work out harder. So now, explain this a little bit. So, so what is going on here? Correct me if I'm wrong. That you have somebody who is. Those are all the things you're listing. These are all like, uh, you know, some lower level, some higher level stresses on the body. And so what's happening is, is and many times, I don't know if you said it, but many times this is also low calorie people, right? People yep. that are trying to restrict or cut back. That They're taking on all these insults that the body has just gotten used to just constantly being on the mm -hmm. defense. And so it starts to lower its cortisol production. Is that what is happening? And so- In extreme cases, now that, when that happens now, you're in really big trouble. But, but what might happen is, and this can happen with many hormones, right? If the hormones are, if a hormone is really high all the time, your mm -hmm. body starts to become somewhat, for lack of a better term, desensitized to it. So receptors will either downregulate or it's not as effective. This is kind of what happens with insulin resistance. You know, before you get diabetes or pre-diabetes, uh, you can track and see insulin levels going up and up with the consumption of sugars or carbohydrates. And people um, don't realize what's going on until, uh-oh, I have full-blown insulin resistance. And then they go into, you know, type 2 diabetes. With this cortisol, it's just this high cortisol all the time. And at first, you kind of get the – and we've all been there, right? We're stressed, but we have kind of this wired energy. Mm -hmm. So maybe lack of sleep, but there's stressful stuff going on, and we feel kind of energized, but it's this wired kind of energy. That can come from cortisol along with catecholamine production and other stress chemicals. Um, and over time, your body starts to lose sensitivity. So then you want to push out more of this, and you tend to seek out things that make you produce more cortisol. And one of those is – these super high intense workouts. The, another one that I find is very interesting is oftentimes these same people will find themselves chronically be rushing or late to yeah. appointments, which I love bringing that up because people will look at me like I'm 
some kind of well, it's in the subconscious. Like, you know? oh. Yeah, like it's almost like it's a self sabotaging kind of a mechanism where it, it you do get a rush from being late, and all of a sudden you have to figure everything out, um, you know, on the spot. And I and I feel like that you do get a bit of that same kind of a rush uh, that you get from something high intensity exercise wise. So now, what I've found with these clients, these are actually some of the hardest clients to get through to. Hundred percent. Um, because they're already uh, everything that they've accomplished in their life usually was from hard grinding work right well and they probably got there you know initially like they lost weight and they they saw some result from doing high intensity workouts but mm -hmm. have never left well and they also it's hard to tell somebody who honestly feels better feels good right from these types of workouts immediately after that it's not good for them mm-hmm like that, that I always found that the, one of the most challenging things. Like, and this, this was really common, right? When I was coaching at Orange Theory, uh, and this was really common when the the rise of CrossFit, right? When more and more people were doing that type of training, and even when HIT was popularized. But what happens is you get somebody who does these things, and they they truly do like it, Be, and because they get this sense of accomplishment, they sweat really hard. Yeah. It was really, and they got through it. And they get that spike of cortisol, so they get the spike of energy afterwards. And so they're very certain that they like this way of training because it makes them feel good. It was really hard as a coach to get through to that person and be like, no, this is not what's good for you. And they're going, no, yes, it is. I can tell it's good. I mean, it gives me more energy. Yeah. I get the I'm I kick I kick the, you know, the day and it's you know, I do great, you know, I kick off the day and I have a great day because kick of the it. Day like, the dick, is yeah, I, yeah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> I got you. Don't I chose worry. not to say <laughs> that. Matt Vincent has a cup all for that. Yeah. <laughs> that was what was going through my head. There's a, there's a more appropriate way for me to say that. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I got that. But <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like the dick. that's what these people the it's really hard to get them out of it because they've either had success through training this way or they feel a certain way from it and it makes them feel good. The challenge is they do feel good or better temporarily in the context of how crappy they usually feel, right? So what tends to happen is you start to feel bad over time and that's how you always feel. And then you have a new definition of what feels good. The reality is, is if they could feel the contrast of what real good feels like, they would see that what they're getting is a nervous, anxious, wired kind of energy. Not unlike, again, like we've all experienced this, lack of sleep. Like, you know, how about like when you first had your son? Remember when you first had your son yeah. and you weren't sleeping, but you were you were energized and you're yeah. like, oh, no, I got plenty of energy. Yeah. Really what it was, it was this. I was high. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know? So it's hard. It's really hard to reverse them out of it. And I think the only winning formula that I had for that was when they would finally get fed up with lack of results. Mm -hmm. When they got to the point where they're like, I don't understand why I can't lose 15 pounds. That's, I'm doing everything and I'm eating so little. What the hell's going on? That's the only way that I could get through to this person. Yep. Was what I'd explain to them is that, okay, you if you're certain you love it, this is where you want to be. Um, and if you're completely happy where you're at, energy, strength, muscle, your body shape, body fat percentage, whatever, if you're happy where it's at, then by all means, let's keep doing it. Yeah. But if you come to me and you say, Adam, I want to change this. If I want to build some muscle, I want to be stronger. I want to have more energy. I want to lose body fat. And you're struggling to hit any of those goals, then I'm going to tell you what you're doing is not what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. So that And that would be the only way that I could break through to them is that obviously it's not working. You have this goal you have not achieved. It's not that you need to do it more and longer or harder to get there. You don't need, you can, we, there's a way to work with your body. Instead, we're working against it right now. Whether you believe it or not, you are. And if you want to make changes, then we have to change the way you're going yeah. about it. That would be my only way to break through. Yeah. Do you guys remember in your early days of training when you started to really see this or notice this as a thing? Like I remember distinctly, this was, I mean, I was an early trainer. This was the, the 24 Fitness on Hillsdale before they redid it, right? So this was a while ago. And I remember there were, obviously there was a room for the aerobics classes. And I remember there was this class and it was a, you know, quote unquote resistance training class, but really it wasn't. What it was, was high intensity circuit training for an hour. Pump classes. Yeah. It was like an hour of, of intense, you know, squats and pushups and dumbbell laterals and, you know, donkey kick. And it was just nonstop intense. And I remember when I first became a trainer, I saw this class and I saw this room full of 40 people doing it. And most of them were middle-aged women um, who were taking this class. And I remember thinking like, wow, these women are going to get great results. Like this is when I was an early trainer, so I really didn't understand this. 
And then I watched this class because it was during a time when I had a client and it was the same women coming in, coming in, coming in. And I remember seeing them sweat and work hard and nobody was progressing. I remember thinking, could they just be eating a ton of food and have a really bad diet? Like what's going on here? Mm -hmm. And I'd see them not change, not change. Well, eventually I figured, you know, I would, I would find ways of getting into these classes so I could potentially talk to new, get new clients. So obviously as a trainer, I was trying to get a new trainer. I was trying to get new clients and I'd go in and start talking to these people and I'd find out some of these women were taking this class for a year, yeah, two years. And then I'd say, you know, is it your diet? You must be eating a lot of calories. Like, oh no, I, I count my cow. I had one woman pull out. She had a, in her workout bag, she had, this is back in the day when people would write, you know, things on paper and she had a notebook. She goes, no, I'm eating 1200 calories a day. And she was showing me the food. And I remember being totally confused how is this even possible it's mind-boggling the the had the same experience but it was with like the group x instructor yeah and i saw mm. them in there with multiple classes sweating profusely and then would come in and like work out and i would see them like putting so much work in and this is back when i uh was in the mentality of of just if you keep putting work in you get a uh, return for that mm -hmm. and it, it was just like, I, I didn't even know how to explain it because even one of my clients asked me why they weren't, you know, in phenomenal shape. And I'm like, I don't know. I had the same thing. I'm like, maybe they're sneaking in a bunch of cupcakes or something. I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> no, that was, a, so I trained, um, that was my experience was training actually group X instructors. Ooh, they, they were hard. Yeah, no, they were really hard. And I mean, and that was the the first time that it kind of, the first like aha moment um, that there was something else going on here, you know, because it wasn't a calorie thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, shit, they were, they should have been burning, you know, 10,000 plus calories a day. Based, I mean, I had group X instructors that were teaching three plus classes in a day, uh -huh. you know, so three three hours or four hours of intense, you know, cardio like training every single day. And they were just stuck. Their yeah. body would not change. And they, you know, and their thought was, oh, I picked up the body pump class too. So I'm lifting the weights, you know? Yeah. So they're lifting the weights. They're doing the cardio classes like crazy. I started holding dumbbells when I'd yeah. go running. So yeah. Oh, totally. Like, Everything I mean, fast. Literally. Yeah. These, those, those were things that they were doing as a strategy and uh, and then I look at their food log, and they were they were eating nowhere near uh, a high amount of calories. Yeah. So that was kind of the I had, first experience. I, for I me. was so confused. I had an experienced trainer that I looked up to uh, that worked with me, and I asked them. I said, "What's going on? Do people just lie?" And he said, "Well, sometimes they do." He goes, "But usually they don't." And he says, "You know, if your body doesn't want to do something." You're not going to be able to force it to do what you think you want it to do. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, the body has this incredible ability, and this is totally true, has this incredible ability to change and manipulate its metabolism and hormones and even drivers of behavior. So cravings or energy or lack of energy or drive or lack of drive in order to get, in order to do what it thinks it needs to do in order to survive, right? So here you are beating yourself up like crazy, probably not getting good sleep, doing all the stuff that we talked about, um, low calories, and your body's like, we need to survive. We are expen we're, we're moving like crazy. We're not eating much. There's a lot of stress. So what it does is it organizes its hormones and it organizes how it operates. And it can literally, there's a huge swing of how many calories your body could decide to burn on its own, depending on what's going on. And some of that is directed through hormones. And there's a lot of stuff that we don't fully understand. And it's pretty remarkable. I mean, later on in my career, when I really figured this out, I would get clients like this. And so long as they complied, I remember I had one lady and I've talked about her before. She was working out all the time, running daily, dropping your calories, had another 10 pounds to lose. I mean, it was, it was a ridiculous amount of activity and low calorie. It was 1200 calories a day, if I'm not mistaken. She was working out seven days a week, which included some resistance training, mostly lots of running Pilates yoga. So she was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. She hired me over the course of a year, she went down to three days a week of resistance training with one day a week of running. So she got down to four days a week of exercise, probably one third of the total amount of activity. And she was eating over 2,300 calories. So we got her to burn that more than a thousand more calories a day and working out one third of the yeah. amount of time because we had got her body to want to right. be leaner. And this is the thing. And, and the, the other thing that'll happen if you keep pushing your body is eventually it'll shut down or become injured uh, as a way to get you to stop. And you see this quite often. Well, I think mm -hmm. the important part of this conversation is to understand too that there, there's a spectrum here. 
that and we're kind of highlighting like the extreme, right? Low calorie. Yeah. Ham- and so there's people going like, oh, well, that's not me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing, you know, 800 calories and I'm not doing seven days a week, you know, four hours a day. I'm not that person. Yeah. That's right? the extreme, right? Right. Or, oh, I don't have five kids or I don't have a crazy stressful job. So this can't be me, but that we're, we're highlighting the extreme version of that, but the, it's a spectrum and there's a lot of people that are on that side mm-hmm. and the middle is the sweet spot, you know, cause then you can be the other extreme. You don't do enough, right? <laughs> you eat too much. You don't do enough movement. You don't do enough mm-hmm. training. You don't put enough stress in your life. So you're seeing minimal to no results. So there's that end of the spectrum. Then they have this, this crazy end and they have everybody in the middle of that. And where we really want to be is right in that kind of middle yes. balance. But there's a lot of people that are to the right of that still that, they're, they're taking on a lot of stress and simply by just scaling back on the stress or maybe increasing calories and feeding the body or changing the adaptation. So this high intensity type of training, maybe do something more like strength sets where I'm, you know, straight sets and long rest periods and, you know, maybe focus on recovery more a little bit. Like, so there's a lot yeah. of people that would see more results just simply by modifying or changing the way they're going about it. Oh yeah. And a lot of times they're just, they just got good at it. It's something that they, that's why they enjoy it. It's like their body adapted to this way of training and they, they associate all these benefits to it, uh, you know, energy wise and whatnot, but they're not progressing. Their body's like fully adapted in this way of training to where it's starting to kind of, uh, have negative, um, uh, uh, differences going. Forward. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, think of it this way, right? All the hormones that people, you know, want to improve or increase, right? Testosterone, growth hormone, like these are the, the, the youth hormones, right? Uh, balance of estrogen or progesterone in women. Um, you want to have good insulin sensitivity. Um, that's very good for you. All of that stuff leads the body towards more energy expenditure. So all of that in combination with the right type of exercise adds active tissue to your body, uh, AKA muscle, which means now you have a higher caloric requirement. Okay. So if your body organizes its hormones in this way, the way that most of us want, we want to feel younger, rejuvenated. We want to burn body fat, build muscle, recover faster, all that stuff. But in order for that to happen, because remember that results in higher caloric expenditure all the time. It, it, it results in more lean body mass. In order for that to happen, your body has to think it's safe to do so. Otherwise, why the hell would it? Why, would, If you were the manager of your body, if you're like in this, imagine this like, like Star Trek, right? You're like in this room operating all these machines and then you're having a meeting with your other operators of the body and you're like, hey, we want to increase the size of the engine. I, we can't do that. We're not, we don't have enough energy. We're expending way too much. We need to conserve, organize everything in a way to continue to conserve. We can't do that. Or if they come and you say, hey, we need, uh, let's make the engine bigger. And he's like, well, let's look at the, More the logs. More <laughs> Yeah, let's look at the logs. Okay, no, we got plenty of energy. Looks like we're cool. Looks like there's more energy coming in or in the future because we don't have this history of no energy. Everything looks cool. It's not stressful. Let's do it. Let's throw a bigger engine on. Let's make this happen. Meanwhile, Romulans are shooting lasers yeah. at you. Yeah. And lasers you know, on Taking stun. onslaughts of yeah. stress everywhere. <laughs> I love that. So good. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.